welcome back uh, the second part of this afternoon uh, or night or morning, depending where you are, um, in our solar punk uh, placemaking channel. And this afternoon, I have the pleasure to be joined by my friend Julio, um, which I will introduce in a second. And Julio will host a series of uh, very interesting events um, throughout the whole day. And it will end up tonight. So it's going to be a very intense day for Julio. We, we will make sure that we're going to bring him enough water and food and, and massage on the shoulder for the whole day. <laughs> um, so Julio Linares is an economic anthropologist. Um, his work explores the relationship between money, uh, direct democracy, technology, and basic income. Um, he went to the, the LSE, the London School of Economics, after having lived uh, and worked in Taiwan for six years. Um, I think he speaks like a bunch of different dialects as well. <laughs> Um, very, you know, very well proficient way. And he's now serving as a social outreach for the Basic Income Health Network. Um, Julio is from Guatemala, is currently based in Berlin and working on the Circle UBI uh, project, which is a universal basic income project um, on the blockchain. Um, and yeah, he will be hosting the entirety of today. And um, yeah, and it's a, I just leave the, the whole stage to him. Um, and I'm gonna make him some 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 tea and some other stuff so he can enjoy. Thank you, uh, Eugenio. Um, thank you all for being here today. Uh, first, uh, big apologies for the timing. This is all, of course, uh, a bit of a jazz. I would like to welcome uh, two comrades from uh, Latin America, um, Constanza and Nelly, uh, who have form the collective Cyberpunk Girls. Constance is joining us from Taiwan, uh, not sure where in Taiwan, and then uh, Melissa is also joining us from Mexico de Efe. So we have quite a very interesting triangulation going on here. Um, yeah, and yeah, I basically leave the space open for them too, so they can present what Cyber Girls is, the collective, what they do, and yeah, welcome. Thanks, Julio. Thanks for having us. Um, also, I just I would like to briefly say that we are also streaming this talk on uh, Radio Cosmica, which is another project that we will present later. And you can tune in also to hear the audio from Mensajito through uh, the link that we put on the chat. And um, well, yeah, so. Uh, Constanza and I are part of Cyber Girls, which is a collective that we found in Mexico City in 2017. Um, because uh, we started, we wanted to know what women and sexual dissidents and non binary people were crafting and creating in Mexico City back in 2017. And we needed to create community. So we wanted to get together and to learn, and that's why we started the, the meeting, Cyber Girls. Uh, so maybe Constanza, do you want to talk a little bit of how we started? Um, sí, hello, everybody. Um, sí, um, when we start um, in 2017, the idea was to meet with uh, other uh, women uh, and non-binary people in Mexico City. And uh, first cyborg girls, we don't do, um, we don't did an um, uh, open call, just we meet with local communities, uh, uh, some groups, the woman group participating in, in the hacker space in Mexico City, or also women doing uh, traditional technology. Um, and then after the, the first cyborg girls, we did an open call and more, peop more people from other countries can join us. <laughs> Yeah, so um, basically, as Constanza said, what we do is 
uh, we make we get together to make hand work mostly and uh, to create our own kind of language through the work that we make. Um, we believe that each practice has its own technique and language and that all, all practices are valuable. Uh, we communicate through craft as a, as a strategy of nonverbal communication and make sharing knowledge makes us uh, inclusive in practices that are usually exclusive. We believe that creating and crafting together creates community and we uh, are retaking the strategies to create community by bringing back the craft that because of gender division did not belong to us as women or that was believed as such. And we feel pride for the knowledge and practices of the grandmas and ancestral knowledge as well. Um, so yeah, we've been holding this event for uh, almost three years. We took a pause this 2020, but uh, we, like in the um, in the traditional crafts section or practices that we have, for example, we have a fanzine fair. Uh, we have like um, a collage workshops, and also we have uh, things other not so traditional that are more related to electronics. So we create um, we create circuits, we work with open source, we also host biohacking uh, workshops. Uh -huh. the, 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 for us, the, the, the most important thing in the in our meeting is to be together and share affection and create safe spaces for everybody and inclusive inclusive spaces. And the, we, we try to include uh, old technologies and new technologies. Um, and also for us, our start point is our body. Uh, and also, we try to claim our uh, safe space for us on internet, um, and also we try to think uh, in a feminist way to create, um, to recreate the idea of technology, you know, including uh, spiritual values and also political values. Yeah, as Constanza said, the main thing is uh, to get together and to and the body as a technology is something very important. So, as you can see here in the picture, we have many bodies <laughs> back in the days when this was a possible thing. Uh, the gathering of people and um, and changing, as she was saying, changing our relationship to um, technology is something super important. So I think it's important to highlight uh, our relation to the internet also because of all this uh, virtual format we are having uh, in this event. And um, well, we believe that internet is a common resource and we advocate for free internet and the defense of digital rights. Uh, that is why we teach workshops on tales and digital security, and we make install parties. We reflect about the internet, its privatization, and the need to defend the freedom in the virtual realm. So um, we seek to encourage people to use internet in an anonymous way and 
and find alternative way, ways to use the internet. And um, well, also as the same idea of the internet being open, we like our workshops to be open. I think it's important to highlight this, that uh, we want them to be accessible to everyone and they are of really low cost or no cost at all. It depends on, on the person that is hosting the, the workshop. And also like we see our meeting as a common. This means that it's made out of the effort of everybody, of all the participants and each one contributes in a different way. They like you have to bring your own gear but also be able to share it and you bring your working materials we provide some materials but uh, and everything is shared um but also it's very important for us to share our knowledge with everybody we feel this is also like a common and it, that is one of the most important things of the meeting that everything is for everyone mm -hmm. which take us to uh, the idea that somehow we still follow these ancient principles from Akka's side. Maybe Constanza, do you want to talk a little bit about this? See, that is uh, uh, an, an idea uh, from uh, our ancestors in Andean area in South America. It means uh, buen vivir in español. Yeah. It's a way to live in the planet, thinking in the planet is, is alive and we have to take care of each other and also uh, we have to uh, try to live in a good way and take care of the earth and the, our resources. And for us, it's important also in, in the techno feminist meeting to include uh, um, ancest uh, ancestral technology, because also in in South America on whole Latin America, uh, there are uh, technologies um, connected with the nature as plants natural medicines, medicines with cannabis or connected to a spiritual life. So that's the idea that to mark outside, another way to live, uh, including the, the, um, our body connected with, with the air. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so here are some examples of the workshops that Constanza was talking about. Um, we had this uh, witch workshop, which was about magical keys for uh, freedom. <laughs> and, um, and yeah, it was about bringing back the ancestral knowledge from our grandmas into the contemporary world. Um, also, um, we believe that um, the there is, yeah, as Constanza was saying, that there is this political notion of technology that we want to bring up. So uh, we really feel like the use of technology as we want to share it uh, has uh, definitely a political uh, side to it. So we, for example, give these workshops about uh, the political notion of coding and life coding also with a feminist perspective. And we also work a lot with the idea of decolonizing. And how do we decolonize? Well, first of all, we don't sell, we share the knowledge and uh, our, what we create and what we teach is not meant to be sold in a capitalist colonialist market. It's uh, another thing. It's a different thing. We want to create a different economy, a different 
uh, society, a different alternative to the patriarchal system. And so uh, we believe that our practices decolonize for the mere fact that getting together gives back to the spiritual and political sense of the community. And especially, especially uh, the sharing between women that were excluded from the most commercial aspects of craft. And as we say, and as we believe, the main idea of the meeting is to recreate the technological imaginaries from, a Latin, Ameri from Latin American feminist speculation. And therefore we are uh, decolonizing knowledge too, which is kind of related to the idea of placemaking that we will talk about a little bit later. <laughs> so, um, Constanza, do you want to add a little bit to it? Um, no, just uh, to say because la pandemia this year, we can we can do just one week of our meeting. Normally, is two weeks. And, and we don't continue in a online version because we, we prefer to be, uh, to keep time for us to think uh, how we can continue. But now it's difficult to think because we don't know if next year we can do it or not. Um, now you can read our uh, statement that we write on our uh, our blog on internet. Uh, we have to write a, a letter about the situation this year um, because uh, we try to think in in the the world change this year, but we are continuing thinking in a feminist way to to be together using including technologies, but not maybe not only online, but we are thinking about how we can we can be on internet and also um, in person. For us, it's important to meet and to see each other and touch each other. Each other. So for now, we, Meli and me, uh, we are working in the archive of the um, Cyborg Girl. Now in the website, you can read the biographies of uh, almost all the participants during these four years that we are doing this, the Cyborg Girl Techno Feminist Meeting. Um, see, and um, well, just for, <laughs> for this year. Um, see, and also we now, we, uh, our meeting is participating in the um, in El Index. Mm -hmm. um, I'm jump to that. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> uh, Mindy Hsu um, uh, did this project. Um, it's online. That is a, a good um, archive with a lot of um, feminist, cyber feminist project around the world. And in, we are participating in with Cyborg Gear and also other other friends from Latin America are also including this index. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. Uh, so for now, you can just like check our website and join us virtually with our resources. And for sure, check the index. Um, yeah, maybe we can do a little recap here. Um, 
We also, so yeah, what we usually do is uh, the format is usually two weeks of the cyber multiversity, which is like the other worlds university uh, that we call the workshops that we have in different spaces in the, both in the city and in the periphery. And uh, in the end, we have a, a, a weekend of performances, fanzine fair and concerts and talks. Uh, so here you can see some of the pictures of our of our closing. I think this was in 2018, probably. 18 mm. or 2019. Mm -hmm. And um, well, as we said, we also uh, teach alternative ways of uh, gynecology. We have gynepunk. Uh, workshops and biohacking workshops because we believe in reclaiming our bodies as technology. And so here are some images of the transplant workshop we had with our friends from Chimera Rosa back in, I think it was in 2018. Mm -hmm. Also we have an area, uh, we receive videos it's called Cyber Cinema. Um, see, we, um, we have uh, a good um, selection from different countries. Um, and sometimes when Nelly and me go to another country, we bring these uh, uh, Cinema to other places. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, cyber cinema is a way of uh, so if the girls that are somewhere else uh, in the world they can't come because we don't have funding. Really, we are self-sustained and we don't really have sponsors or anything. So uh, this is a way that girls from all over the world can participate with us. Mm. And um, well, maybe highlighting a little bit um, some of the of our communication materials that we use for the for every year. Uh, we collaborate with different um, designers and illustrators. And um, every year we change the image uh, a little bit of the, of the meeting, but we always keep the idea of the cyborg uh, influenced by Donna Hardaway's idea of the cyborg. Mm -hmm. And um, we also try to do a little bit of merch like uh, tote bags and shirts and stuff like that to, to maintain ourselves. And um, well, Constanza said that you can check the, um, the archive we are building in, in our website. And yeah, so we had to postpone the meeting this year right and um but we've definitely we definitely want to find a way to make it because right now we are around 160 cyber girls from 14 countries so we've realized that uh, this meeting is really necessary is a um is something that we need and we want and that is a really um uh, i don't know that it fits our souls in a way it sounds very romantic but it's true we didn't have this before and we realized that that building community is super 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 important uh, Cyber Girls for me is a, a very good example of placemaking because constantly we are uh, finding ways to meet and to share and uh, 
it's hard to do so in the in the current scenario, right? But but we are a strong community. Uh, I mean, a uh, proof of that is that like the expectation that we have this year and that the community had this year to for the meeting to happen, and uh, so we are really just like waiting for the moment to make it again. And uh, yeah, in the meantime, just join us at cybergirls.wordpress.com and stay tuned in our social media. And um, yeah. Yes. <laughs> nice. Thank you so much. Um, that was really, really uh, insightful and interesting. It was, uh, I was really drawn by this idea of producing knowledge through the body. In Guatemala, uh, where I'm from, uh, the communitarian feminists talk about um, these two territories of the fence, the, the body territory and then the, the land territory. Uh, mm -hmm. I, was yeah. just, I was curious about, um, in terms of technology, uh, what, how would you place that or, or territory, ter territorialize it? Uh, like thinking about it through the body as an extension, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, what were you, can you repeat the part of, um, of, uh, as an extension of the body technology, as an extension of the body you were saying? Yeah. Or also an extension of the land or I don't know. I, I, exactly. Yeah. As an extension of the land, like what happens with this space that is the internet, uh, like what do we have to do there we definitely believe in reclaiming what the free portion that is left of the internet um uh, we definitely uh think about this a lot like mm -hmm. uh, and i was listening yesterday to uh, lorena Cabnal. um uh, that, that she talks about this, uh, the territory of the body and the territory of the land, and how is this extended to the virtual realm, right? It's a big question for all of us. And I think it's something that we need to think about because you don't really think about like, a, 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 I don't know, a, a portion of land in, the internet as such but I mean if you think of the servers for example and um, and the physical space that the whole um, infrastructure of the internet uh, takes it makes you want to have like your own server <laughs> mm -hmm. I don't know like what is the real autonomy uh, in in the virtual Sí, es que um, our world, uh, physical world, is we have a patriarchal and capitalist system, um, and if a feminist community create an extension of our land in, on internet, we can share. Um, a little bit the system inside of the, this system. For that, it's important to open new spaces for feminism, cyber feminism, techno feminism, trans feminism, because yeah, the, the world now um, is collapsing. No? The humanity, the humanity, and our way to live in this planet is. Is yeah, is uh, damage, no? <laughs> uh, it's, it's a continuous damage. So now, for that, we think important to create a spaces for for women and non-binary people in on internet and also physical. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh... 
Well, yeah, it's a, so basically how to think about this virtual feudalism that is now the internet and how to make it an autonomous zone. Uh, yeah, it's a very interesting question. Yeah, I like that concept that you just throw in virtual feudalism. Yeah, well, because now we have all these big Amazons and the Facebooks and we're kind of like in their land and they're just kind of extracting data from us. Um, yeah. it doesn't, we don't own it, right? It doesn't belong to us. Uh, it feels like, a, like it's supposed to be a, something free and a commons, but it's really not. Uh, we are just the, we are the product, no? So how do you reclaim that space with these servers, with these uh, material infrastructures also? Uh, that's also, also always a question, right? Um, and also you mentioned about uh, Gene Punk. Um, this is done by a, a, a friend of ours, common friend of ours, Clau. Uh, yeah. And uh, I guess that's that's an example, I guess, of how how to also reclaim also these practices and knowledges of the body and also like in a way that is more autonomous, I guess, no? Uh, can you talk maybe a little bit more about that uh, to explain to people, you know, what that is and how that works for those who are not so familiar with the concept? La pregunta es que si nos puedes hablar más de Ginepunk y el concepto. Ah, so this is the project the Cloud Kinky, our friend. She participated in all the version of, of Cyborg Gear. Um, she um, is doing DIY Bio Lab uh, for um, uh, gynecological affection. Uh, and she is trying to include uh, natural medicine. And also she's doing DIY microscopy and, and also um, 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 uh, she uh, she is doing conversation about sexuality and, and also about um, uh, how we can take care by uh, ourselves uh, and she now is, uh, is uh, has an open space on, on Facebook for people that have some uh, problems uh, you can ask directly there and maybe she cannot answer but other people participating in this group can share medicine or or you can help other in because you know that um, the healthy system in not every country country is good for uh, for example for abortion or no sé there are a lot of discrimination with trans people uh, so in, for that the Ginepong network is important uh, on internet and also out of internet. We every year have a space for Ginepong uh, laboratory in, uh, in techno feminist meeting because we think it's so important a space for everybody. Mm. Bacán. We have, maybe this is related to a question um, that was asked just now by Julsi, which is uh, how to connect ancestral technology and cyber technology. Uh, and also asking about the connection and knowledge connection or, or yeah, synergy between cyber fe cyborg feminists or cyber feminists uh, or cyber girls and in indigenous communities. So going back to, I guess, also what Lorena Cabnal was saying, about the territory. Mm. Yeah, so let's think about binary code, like the base for contemporary computers. Uh, 
and Constanza will probably depend on this, but binary code uh, is uh, based on ancestral knowledge. So, and we have uh, the example of accounting systems, uh, uh, ancestral counting systems that were also used to make uh, the computers, the computer programming that we use nowadays. So that is a very direct link uh, between uh, the, the knowledge uh, of ancestral technology and cyber technology. They also, for example, uh, this year, during the la hack, um, hack feminist uh, activity, the first weekend of Cyborg Girl, uh, we we meet in um, in, the, in a hacker space in La Chinampa is the name. Um, and in la, in la periferia de Mexico City, and we include a group of indigenous people, uh, women that uh, they know uh, Nahuatl. Nahuatl is, is a language, old language in Mexico, indigenous language. And they, we are trying to create a code uh, using Nahuatl, mm -hmm. because uh, almost all the um, uh, uh, pro, uh, pro, uh, code or uh, language for programming uh, start with English, you know? mm -hmm. and if you want to learn code, first you, you have to learn English and then to understand, not to learn code. And they are changing this way and they are trying to include other language. And in this workshop, uh, this group of women, they teach us uh, now what? And we try to change uh, some uh, words uh, and we try to include this language to do to do uh, live coding or I don't know. We, in this moment, we are we are uh, trying to do live coding. No? So for for us, it's important to try to to change our. Um, our way to do um, to use a software or hardware. No? We are trying to include uh, other cosmovision. That's very interesting. Uh, and, in, and about this binary code, uh, is there, do you think it's possible also to create non-binary forms of code? Uh, that's a good question. Como que chay como like how to do non binary forms of code. This this is I guess yeah maybe also onto this question of nawalatl using nawalatl nawalatl as a form of coding. I don't know. It's just the thought. Do you think is there? I don't know. Is there such a thing as analog coding? <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a very good idea. Interesting. Yeah. Let's see. I'm going to check if there are any other questions from the audience. Not so far. Nice. Um, if not, I will ask also like maybe a, a final question, and then maybe you can also, uh, yeah, give some final reflections. Um. Like what? What do you think is the biggest challenge in in organizing? Uh, I guess before Corona, is now adding the Corona pandemic is also a bit more complex. But how how to get this this these practices, these 
epistemologies, these forms of organization also, um, into the general mind of people. Uh, how to re how to hack the the culture, let's say, because uh, that's what you're doing in a way. Like for me, it, it was very inspiring to hear you. So, what do you th what are the biggest challenges you think in in actually facing these big uh, structures like the patriarchal structures, the capitalist structures? How to hack that? Uh, mm. Well, I think one of the biggest challenges is to make it sustainable, to make the meeting sustainable in a way, because um, well, we do it all ourselves, and uh, we have a team of about five people that are like deep uh, on it, besides all the the um, the workshop uh, presenters and the people that give talks and everything but at the core is like we are a group of a limited group of a group of of not so many people uh it's not so much maybe about the amount of people but rather um the time because we all have like side jobs to these and uh, and the and so like we need to make time uh, to organize the meeting in the meeting and it's like extra work so like in a way uh, we try to escape uh, to the to the um, um the uh, limitations let's say of uh, the capitalist world but we are still in it so we need to balance out right <laughs> like we need to like find time to do the the meeting things the techno feminist meeting things and also the other things um it's like this problem with uh like the issue with um the home workers, let's say, like, you know, they work in a, they have a full time job, but when they get home, they also have this other job, which is working at their home and it's not seen as a, as a work. So I don't know. For me, that's one challenge. How about you, Constanza? <laughs> no, I'm thinking about, uh, I don't know, for me now it's difficult to think um, because no sé, la, la pandemia uh, changed the world eating in one day, yeah, uh, all our expectatives, all our plans change. So for me now it's difficult to think in solutions or no sé, I don't know, now I am trying to, to, to be quiet and listen, <laughs> just this, but I have no answer for a lot of things now, <laughs> because every day the things change and it's difficult to think about. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and in the meantime, Taiwan, how is the situation now? Is it also a lot of things happening with Corona or? Is it more like, like, okay, or? Mm -hmm. uh, no, escuché. Like, how is the situation? ¿Cómo está la situación ahorita en Taiwán con respecto al corona? Or were you... Uh, here, yeah, there is not COVID. Mm -hmm. okay. No. <laughs> no, because they closed the border in the beginning of the pandemic and now they have any case but they are strict uh, strict when when you enter you have to be in quarantine during two weeks in a hotel a, a special hotel so now no no it's not problematic situation Sounds like a good place to think from, to, to listen from. 
Mm -hmm. All right. And do you have any any final reflections? Uh, any any comments? Anything you would like to share the audience? Uh, otherwise, we can start flowing into our uh, <laughs> extraterrestrial soon. The next uh, radio show. <laughs> Yeah, no, I think uh, just stay tuned to see whatever we come up with in this pandemic time and um, check the cyber feminism index because you will find a lot of good things there. We will post the, the link on the, on the Q&A chat and uh, yeah, let's just here are friends from the Excel Fair Stills. And uh, thanks so much for having us. Thanks so much for inviting us. This was Melly, there is, there is, uh, it's our pleasure, but there is a question for you. It's um, mm, the, somebody checked the website and they want to know what's going to happen the 8th of March. If you have a ready channel or maker in your groups. On the 8th of March, uh, well, I guess we need to figure that out, Constanza, <laughs> if we're going to do anything. Yes, with you. If we, if we, the question is if, if, if we are doing Cyber Girl next year or what? Yeah, it's uh, in 2021. Um, yeah, it, uh, so. No, yes. now we, we don't have plan, any plan yet. <laughs> cool. Yeah. Yeah, we need to find the time and place whenever Constanza and I can to figure out what we're going to do. Mm -hmm. Lovely. And you, Constanza, any final thoughts or comments you want to share with everybody? No, thank you for joining us and listening to this conversation. <laughs> and yes, if you have time, you can search our web. Um, we have a lot of projects uh, to share because the idea is to promote the, the work of people um, in Latin America, principally. Um, see, yes, for now it's a website, uh, almost all the information that we do this during the four years of cyber gear. Mm -hmm. Well, amazing. Thank you so much for sharing your, your, your knowledge, your, your, your experiences, and yeah, um, all my solidarity. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, yeah, great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yay. Mm -hmm. Nice. <laughs> awesome. Well, so now we we'll we'll take a pause to we'll set take, up. Yeah, we'll take a five minute pause to set up uh, our extraterrestrial here, uh, our next speaker. And of course, you're all welcome to, to stay and, and join this. Uh, yeah, and we'll be back in a, a little moment. Yeah.